Hi everyone, this is Meg from Permacoach and we've had lots of requests for a how-to video on putting the cupcake beds together. So that's what Graham and I are going to show you today. Uh, we make these from roofing iron and uh, all of the materials we've used have been repurposed. So we haven't bought anything. We just put a shout out to the community and lots of people had bits and pieces of this stacked up against sheds. So we're going to start off by coming over here and getting Graham to show us how he cuts the sheets. Hi. So um, this is mild steel, standard roofing iron. It's, it is steel, but we call it roofing iron. There are a couple of ways to cut it. I used to do it with an angle grinder. It's very messy, very hard, very lots of sharp edges. I bought this instead. It's a metal shear and, uh, and it's like basically a pair of scissors that it cuts through this like butter. And it took a little while to figure out the best way. It's a right-handed tool because it's like scissors. And so we go like this. Probably a job we, probably a job we need ear protection for. Probably. <laughs> All right, well that was it. The other sheets that we have are at the same size. And now that that's done, I'm going to add this one over here. The interesting thing about this steel is, first of all, it's very, very accurate in the way it's made. And it only goes one way. So it's like, it's a bit like tongue and groove, except it's an overlap. I'll just slip that in. Now you notice here I put one full span in there. Now if you want to determine the diameter then it matters on how many sheets you have. Basically this gives you 780 millimeters of uh, length or arc of a circle. So we now have six of these so six times 780 turns out to be 4.6 sorry 4.6 4680. It's going to give us a diameter of roughly 1400 or so, almost five feet. Next thing about doing this is we line them all up and we decide which side we want to have on the outside. In this case we're going to go for this dark colour. The underside of this material is light and that's usually the inside of a house roof or whatever. And uh, I, I, what I do is I'll decide one side is going to be my top and I try to make that as straight as possible and if, if it's not all the right lengths exactly then the bottom side can be a bit rough if you're sitting it on the ground yeah um, I just wanted to make the comment about color the reason why we're interested is that the light color is really great if we're going to grow food because we don't want to want to absorb heat and the darker color it's great if we're making a compost bin because the heat's going to help the compost to break down. Um, when you put the shout out to collect this stuff, if people have it in pale colours, that's ideal for veggie beds. But you can always use it. You can do the dark, you know, if it's been sprayed a dark colour, it's still really useful. Thanks, Gray. All right. So, fastening this is quite easy. These are standard tech screws. These are 10 millimeter head, um, probably 16 millimeter length. And, and I've just lost one, but I've got a whole jar of new ones over there. Um, so because this is really well made, the easy way to do it is to line it up and just press firmly with your foot. And in this case, there's already a hole pretty much where I want it. So I'm going to use it. In fact, I'm going to use that one. And there you go, like that. These are just put two in. <clears throat> this one will be a bit longer because there's not a hole. Well, that was really quick and good. And this is all very easy. And just by pressing down firmly, I'm kind of pushing it into place so it lines up very well. <clears throat> 
Now what's going to happen here is we use short ones, of course, because it's going to stick out on the other side. But by putting it on the ridge on this side, it's going to be in a trough on the inside, so it's going to be less of a threat than it might have been. And so on. All right, so what I've done now is pop them all around and I've stood it up and I've rolled it together like this. And this is a little bit harder than the others, but if it's all worked out well, then uh, it'll all line up nicely. So we just need to grab two screws. And I've popped this in the right place. And bring it very easy and hard way at the same time. Now that that one's in, the bottom one's difficult. Stop for a few stops now. Okay. Okay. So, because the bottom one's difficult, an alternative way of doing this is doing what I did and then lying it down. Again, pop a clamp in there. I've got my screw. Hold it tight. Happens to be a hole already available, which is good. done now we're just going to move it into place so we'll come back in a second oh actually before you do that can you just show me the the bit you've got on the end of the drill oh just yes for anyone unfamiliar it's a hex head screw and this is 5 sixteenths which is oh eight millimeters in uh, metric much the same sort of thing and battery driven if you're going to go to battery driven tools rule number one choose a manufacturer and stick to it because they're all different uh, I've gone with Makita and uh, they're very, very good. So Graham's putting this one into place at the moment and I just wanted to make a comment about height. Uh, a number of people have copied this idea and tagged us on Instagram. Thanks for the shout out. And one of the things we've noticed is that um, a lot of people are making them much shorter. So for a compost bin that's not an issue. But with the cupcake beds, if you want them to be rat proof, uh, wallaby proof, and possum proof you probably want to come up a bit and yeah and saw back proof Graham's um, miming that one of the other issues is that at this height your back's at a really bad angle you really want to be reaching straight out in front of yourself not leaning over at that dangerous angle for those of us with back issues so um, go high because you are going to bury a little bit of them on oh, our Graham's modeling the compost bin thank you darling um, you are going to <laughs> You are going to be burying the base of them into the ground because that's part of what helps to make them rat proof is that the rats can't dig in under them. I'm not terribly worried. I think even if the rats dig in under them, there's an awful lot of organic material they've got to get up through in order to get to plants in any case. And we've had no trouble with rats with these. So um, that's the bed. We have talked about making these an oval shape, uh, but one of the uh, real benefits of using a circle shape is that pressure gets distributed evenly around the circle. So you can see how floppy it is now, um, but as it gets filled with material, it will actually hold its shape really well, whereas an oval shape would probably push out at the top. When it uh, comes to getting to your compost when it's all done, you can very easily just undo two screws down the side and step back because it'll spring out a bit but we've also found you can just easily lift it up and move it without having to do that then you have a nice pile of composted material ready to do hard labor swinging it around the other thing we've done with these is when we've set them up as garden beds we've used hugel culture methods that would obviously be an awfully large space to fill with topsoil um, so we've basically gathered logs and uh, any green material. We usually take the opportunity to prune something nearby. Um, seaweed if we can get it, cardboard, waste paper, anything organic. And we fill the, uh, the base of it with all of that organic material. Um, what that means of course is if, that if you want to set up a mandala system, you can build these beds over time. So start with one use it as your household compost bin and then as you get closer to the top you're going to top that up with compost or topsoil and Graham's also demonstrating how he very easily uses 
a piece of timber just to make sure that we're as close to circular as possible because that's the kind of thing that does our head in. <laughs> I uh, just found this on the ground and realised it's uh, 1.5 metres and I hadn't really calculated but it turns out that 1.5 metres is very nearly good enough for this. Uh, when we made the cupcake beds I made a stick exactly the right diameter and I just went around like this to just check that the diameter is pretty much the same. Turns out it's probably impossible to actually make a nice circle but for this purpose and it's going to be off and on and off and on it's good enough it doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody's judging us in a competition for our design skills. Now you also had the idea Gray of roping these off what did you think of that? Oh yeah that's right um I thought of the idea of putting a, a a band around the outside and tightening it up so as it fills it's less likely to push itself out like that. We, we only thought of that after we built the cupcake beds so it might be worthwhile now getting a strap like a, a packing strap um, that we use on the car and so on and just put it around this thing and hopefully it'll kind of hold its shape more circular. So as we fill this up, before we fill this up we'll, uh, we'll just put one on there and see what happens. Now the other thing we do with these is uh, obviously this has no lid on it. We top these up using uh, coffee bags, Hessian coffee bags, but you could use um, anything. You could use old cotton towels, you could use... Um, Here's one we prepared earlier. <laughs> you could use, if you can find uh, carpet made entirely of natural materials, that's quite difficult these days. Uh, don't use carpet with plastics in it because you don't want those going into your soil. And um, worst case scenario, you could even use a, an old piece of canvas or tarpaulin or something like that. But you will need to cover them uh, either that or we've also had success just using deep layers of mulch. So we put the compost in and then we put a deep layer of mulch over the top and basically create a lasagna in the bed. So next I think, next I think Ray will go over and have a look at how you've protected me from the sharp edges over in the cupcake beds. Yes. So we're over here in the cupcake beds and Graham's going to talk to us about how he made these very beautiful um, hardwood edges to protect me from the sharp metal. Yes, so I was going to mention that uh, you've got to be careful of these hard edges of this stuff. It, it's very difficult to make it uh, safe. So we thought of an idea of just putting some hardwood over the top and this happens to be about 120 mil by about 30 mil and it's actually old fence railing so I reckon it's about 70 years old. It's lying on the ground so what I've done is measured the size of this to get the right size. This is an octagon and it's made to fit this particular size. These are seven sheets the diameter is almost 1800 wide and because it's really really heavy it's just sitting here. We thought of a way to fasten it but we haven't really needed to fasten it so it just sits here and it turns out we've made it exactly the right height for beer. Given this, the next thing that we did was prepare for these. The idea of this, as you've probably seen over lots of fruit trees and so on, is where you can just put netting over when we need to, when uh, vegetables are reaching the point when, um, oh, and here's an example, one we prepared earlier. So if we think it's gonna be threatened by bugs of any kind or moths or whatever, we can net over, pardon me, the, uh, the uh, plants that are growing inside. We could drop it over the sides, we can drop it inside as you can see there. Um, the other point to make about repurposed timber is that it's really essential that you check it for lead. So you can buy a test kit from Bunnings, which is what we did with the old fence palings, and just made sure that they hadn't been painted with a lead-based paint, because obviously you don't want lead-based paint anywhere near your food production. So finally, I wanted to show you um, how scalable this design is. These ones are much smaller. Graham's going to step in here now to give you some... He's going to model these for you to give you some idea of scale. So, so Gray, how many sheets are these? These are three sheets and uh, I could say three sheets to the wind. <laughs> um, it becomes a little less than circular because when you join them together it sort of gets a bit flat and doesn't bend very well. So this is more... I can never think of the name of a triangle with a rounded <laughs> uh, A triangular uh, circle. Uh, four sheets, you tend to not notice that. 
but as I say, it's a diameter of about, I'm going to say, seven or 800 perhaps. We've gone from 800 with three sheets to 1800 around here with seven sheets. I wouldn't go more than that. I think it uh, becomes unstable and inaccessible and, and just difficult to uh, work with and manage. And look, I haven't worried about doing anything with the edges on these. I've actually um, not had a problem, I think, because of Graham's great little uh, Makita tool. And no, we're not sponsored by them. It's a genuine endorsement. <laughs> um, the, if only. If only. <laughs> um, but, but I have found that these are smooth enough to be safe. But if you're around kids or something, I'd be looking at protecting them with something. Um, we've had people come up, yeah, wearing gloves. We've had people come up with a couple of different clever ideas, including a bead of silicon uh, or splitting a piece of plastic hose and running that around the top. We haven't seen any of those in practice, but um, both would be worth a try if you don't have either the material or skills to do a to do a timber edge. The other thing we've done in the past, and Graham's demonstrating it now, is that as we're filling a bin, um, we just hang some hessian bags over the side where we uh, where we're dumping, and it's just a little additional piece of protection. I think if I had kids around. I'd be putting those all the way around just to make sure that the edge stayed safe. You wouldn't want little fingers getting caught. This is a good idea whenever uh, you're working with this adding more material. Don't be uh, blasé about it. If you're going to be dumping stuff in here, just hang a bag or something over the side while you're working, fill it up, take the bag away again when you're done. But um, yeah, just don't work with rough edges. And the danger of it, of course, is doing this and then finding half of your body inside the pit. Yeah, and I mean, these are, these are work to treat, um, as you can see. We, what are we at? About week 22, 23, Gray, since we oh, built this system. Something like that. Um, and July. I've, yeah, so I've already had two full uh, bins of compost from here that have gone back in to top the beds up. And uh, I've got another one that I've filled up. I'm really happy to use weeds. Uh, I find, you know, weeds are natural miners of minerals from the soil, and I end up with this absolutely spectacular compost when I use weeds. Um, if I get a few little weeds coming up, I just pull them out and throw them back into the compost. It's another resource. So um, we also put pruned uh, green material from the garden in, as well as food waste and the occasional bit of cardboard or paper waste. So that's it for the cupcake beds. Um, I think they're a terrific design, Gray. I think you've done a really good job on them. Thank you. And I hope this video helps everybody else that's been saying, we love them, we want them, how can we build them? Bye!